So we do have quorum, um, but we also have three directors missing. And I think we have other people that received an invite that, I, I don't know, Thomas, how many, how, are, are there other people that requested an invite that? Uh, uh, let me yet? check, who did I miss? Uh, Lens Neil. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm checking quickly. I think. Yeah, we should start soon if we want to stay on time because the agenda is quite busy with the two presentation. All right, I, I lost the tab that the agenda was in. Um, I, I have a, a procedural question before we start. Um, are people content with me continuing to serve as chair? And if yes, do we want to formally designate that in some way or just kind of play it by ear? You are doing the job very well. So I'm yeah. in favor of letting you chair every meeting I I, I, I take notes for. Go ahead. I'm good with it. All right. I'm in favor of this. Well, we have two main agenda items this week. And uh, let's jump right in. The, the first small item is previous minutes. These were already posted to the, uh, to the blog. And so they're sort of de facto approved. But if anybody sees anything in them that they object to, please let me know and I can correct that. It's a little bit late now. And so we'll, we'll go straight to our first actual agenda item, and that is a presentation from the artwork SIG on some updates to our, to our uh, visual design. And uh, are you able to share your screen? Do we need to grant you permission, or how does that work? Hi, uh, I'm going to try that. I'm going okay. to try to share. Go right ahead. I'm sharing now. Can you see my, my screen? Yes. Great. Well, this is a, the presentation of the long issue we, we have in the artwork, the SIG, about the CentOS logo redesign. Uh, in the few 20 minutes next, I will gonna be talking about that. Uh, uh, it's a resume of that issue, uh, and the, the goal is to present it to, to the board. Uh, all the participants here. So the first thing would be why we are uh, updating this. Well, the, the two main points of this update is trying to, to have a better, better brand reproduction on different visual manifestations. The previous logo, uh, the colors were a bit problematic when you are trying to reproduce it in, in different visual manifestations like clothes and and also some sites like font, font ways and yeah, uh, things like that. So by this proposition, we are trying to, to, to solve th those things. The other point is the, the open source license. The previous law had a, a, a typeface that is uh, under an unknown or not very known uh, license. So we are trying to use open source license here. Well, a, a bit of understanding of, of context of our structure and the visual identity is that we are trying to implement a, a monolithic visual uh, structure. Here we have one name um, and one visual style in different visual manifestations. So, for example, in the, the distribution, we try to match the, the background uh, with, for example, the websites as well. Also, if we have some uh, items, uh, we also try to put the same information on them. So when you see them all, you can recognize uh, they are part of, of the project. So, uh, let's see about the transition, uh, how, how it, it, it would be. This is the single transition. We have now on the left side the, the logo we are used to for more than 20 years. 
And on the right side is the, the proposition uh, we reached in the, in the, in the issue uh, in the artwork sheet. As you can see the, in, the, in the right side, the, the colors are not there. It is transparent with uh, strong lines and also has a rounded corners. This um, made a symbol uh, and, and, and more use of the space around it uh, for itself. So about the typeface transition, uh, here is uh, how it would look. On the top, we have the, the type we were using so far. On the left side, we have a, a variant. This is a proposition that was made uh, in, in the issue to have a classic version. So the, the logo we have a, 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 well, a, a still remains active somehow. So we are using Montserrat for the official uh, typeface and style script for the, the classic version. Here is the, the logo uh, with the symbol. And now the classic branding uh, in more detail, uh, as mentioned earlier, earlier, it is a 20 years brand and we love it. Uh, it will uh, continue to exist under a different name. This is a proposition, of course. Uh, here, here it is in more detail, how it will look in the horizontal uh, form. The construction, uh, it's here. This, uh, these round uh, circles here are, are for reference only to know the spaces between the elements. The arrows uh, shows the, the direction of the, of the fonts. Here is the, the vertical version. The vertical version with expansion in the, the composition. And now the, the one that we will be using in, in, in distribution websites and, and another uh, official, official uh, uh, visual manifestations. Okay, about the, the branding itself, it is the, the main visual uh, identi identification of the project. As we see earlier, it is made of a symbol uh, and a typeface. They can be used combined or, or separately. Being the, the symbol, the, the more uh, prominent uh, element when used uh, separately. An important thing uh, of the symbol is that it must be exactly reproduced every time to provide a, a good uh, recognition of the, of the product. So here it is the symbol in more details, the type, the symbol and the type combined that makes the logo. the construction of the logo. Here is an important uh, uh, consideration is the, the expansion that we are facing here in this, uh, in, in this uh, element here in C. Uh, we can expand the, the base logo to make all laws for different visual manifestation. That is the case of the distribution. It is also the case of, of six. Here is the, the vertical version, the construction, the colors. The colors will remain as they are so, so far. They won't suffer any change and we are trying to use, to use them uh, in a way that doesn't affect uh, the reproduction of the logo itself. Like in websites, for example, we draw uh, a borderline 
in the header that, that, that has these colors inside to, to, to make that connection. Here is a, a preview of different laws for different visual manifestations that they can be used, uh, different sites, uh, websites and, and elements we have. Also for persons too, because when you create a teacher, for, for, for example, uh, you want to have to, to have the, the cloth in your, in your name for identification events and things like that. This is the one for six. I tried to, to consider the, the active six, or others can be added too. When you have the, the base the structure of the logo, you can expand it uh, to, to, to whatever is it you make. Uh, about the implementation strategy, it is important to, to consider how we are going to do that uh, because that would affect the, the visual uh, presentation of the project in, in more directions. So I would, uh, I'm proposing to use it, the, the distribution websites and promotion visual manifestations. Uh, we we'll see the, the lower design in the next mile release or of sense stream as a milestone, maybe. But it, it, it doesn't have to, to do that. It can be a late. But it's important that the, the three visual manifestations we are working on, uh, the distribution, the distribution, the, the websites and, and promotion and stuff be consistent in what we are showing uh, at, the, uh, at, the, at, the, at the same time. So in distribution, we try to be open here. We, we will be changing that in CentOS logo. There is a repository for this already. Uh, in websites, we have a, a dev domain to, to show the, the, the new logo as well. And the promotion will be, uh, will take place later once the implementation be in this uh, two other visual manifestation, the distribution on the websites, once the, the, the brand be established to, to avoid confusions, confusions. So that's my presentation. Uh, if you have any question or, or comment, uh, I'm open to, to receive it. Thank you very much. So the question that I would ask is, and I don't know if this is a question for you or if I need to consult with somebody in legal, but my question is whether we must get this legally registered or if we can just start using it at some point. And uh, I think probably I should ask um, Red Hat Brand about that. Yes, that's, that, that's an important. Mo, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's that's an important point, Rich, because uh, at this point of time uh, we are not certain of the of those uh, boundaries. So we need to to confirm that with the brand owner uh, how we can do that to be certain of the way to to proceed. This is a proposition for them to maybe to see that uh, what we have, uh, um, probably we need the the guidance from 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 them to, to implement it. Um, so most so I suspect that the CentOS uh, brand logo revision with Red Hat Legal like is probably not going to be anywhere near as Herculean and awful as it was for Fedora. So, um, but it's still probably a good idea to basically, if we're all okay with this, we should just go ahead and 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 start that process so that it can be ready in time for for CentOS Stream Nine. I, I have, I guess, what I would call a stylistic question. I don't really have any design training, so I ask occasionally not elegant questions. But I notice uh, if you look at the arrows, uh, two of the three tips are sharp, and one of them is not. Uh, the only rounded corners are actually on the outside of the image. Everybody else has got pointy ones. Um, is that in vogue for design things? Am I just confused? You mean the, the, the round corners? 
are only in the outside of the of the of, of the load. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's mostly just my brain flags that as a uh, inconsistency, but I don't know if that's a good inconsistency or not. I just noticed that two of the three points are pointy. Well, uh, what we are showing now is the result of, of the issue. Uh, probably if this question uh, had arrived in the issue, we probably in, uh, can attend it uh, together, I guess. Now I don't have uh, any uh, any comment about that. Uh, it is an aesthetical uh, thing, I guess, uh, about uh, the rounding corners. Uh, Okay, I was just I, curious. Yeah. Uh, I'm it was a transformation from the previous one. I'm the rounded sure corner was suggested, but sorry, sorry, go ahead, Nick. Yeah. Uh, I don't see pointy arrows. Um, so I'm not, or like it has, I see that it's around, the two rounded squares are overlaid the same way that the sharp squares were in the old one. And it's pointy arrows point toward the center. Oh. He, 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 he means the just the corners uh, of the nodes in in the vector. Oh, so, I so see. they're sharper. You see at the at the right angle interior and at the one point in the center, but then the, it's very rounded on the the outer one pointing out. Mm, I see. Yeah, those could be softened, but I'm not sure if that detail matters too much. But if you if you look at the um, uh, issue one where they're uh, you know two years ago they were uh, trying out a couple different variations at, at one point there's um, uh, different levels of of softness added to those corners so. Um, I guess this is the version that won in that discussion. Yes, oh. in that discussion, we, we, we get to the point of, of proposing this one, but certainly there are others uh, that can be considered as well. I think uh, this matter of, of, of let's talk about it, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure I've got a strong preference on pointy versus not. It was mostly just, oh, that's not the same in every place. And my brain flags these things. Let's see the, the, the old one we have here, the transition. Probably, probably here, you can, you can see it. The, the borders inside are, are, are sharpie. But what probably is a discussion to have in, in the issue or, or somewhere else. Mm. Yeah. But in terms of like the larger scale presentation bits, I I love the layouts, the uh, style guides, the font looks cool. Again, I don't know anything about design, so most fonts look cool to me, but that font looks cool. Yeah, I really like the consistent styling around all the various properties and applying a consistent language to all the all the SIGs as well. I think it's really yeah, really helpful in making sure people understand they're all part of the same project. Yeah, I personally the the thing that I, the thing that I would probably consider is the colors that we have Centos like from the old logo. We could use them as single color overlays for the various um, aspects of the project. So like a color could be for the CentOS stream project. Another could be for content delivered by SIGs. And another is for artwork and another for design, for like mind share and design and whatnot and, and things like that. Because then that assigns, it, it, it takes those colors and associates them uh, with the project. And it makes it, it, it makes it show that there's something unifying about it. And at the same time, you're applying a single color to the logo as opposed to multiple colors. So it's not a pain in the butt to, to put into print and stuff like that. 
um, but like assigning roles to the colors can make those colors more meaningful and, and kind of tie everything together. Also, like just having no color at all feels just a little bland. There were some some uh, mock-ups of using it in exactly that way at some point during the progression of the ticket. So that, that idea has been experimented with a little bit in there. I, I like that myself. I, I like the extra branding for SIGs and the extra branding for stream and so on. I mean, you yeah. can you can certainly bet that if once this gets approved, I'm going to request that we get some hyperscale branding for this because uh, we're going to need it <laughs> for some of the stuff that we're doing. Yeah, I like so we idea. are go for it, Rich. Well, we're we're very much at the end of the time allocated for this. Um, if I, I guess the the procedural issue here is, do we have uh, any objection to unanimous consent to approve this, and and see it go forward to whatever the next step is, including legal review? I heard mostly positive noises, so I will take that as as uh, no objection. To that approval, I, um, I uh, yes, go ahead. I, I guess I thought we were possibly going to see some different options or variations come out of these this renewed discussion. So, but I, I guess where we're at is just a renewed effort to approve this logo that's been sitting in the sitting sitting on the sitting there for. That is what I understood was being proposed in this agenda item. Um, if we're not ready to do that, we can certainly kick it down the road another month. But uh, <laughs> you know, that that's I'm just the chair. That's up to you all. Um, Sorry, my, my only concern was uh, I would love love to hear what Johnny think about that because he was the one very keen to comment on it so this is why i would be reluctant to agree now without him but um it's my opinion last time he, we were here he said something along the lines of like he'd like to see color preserved somehow and he'd like to see the old logo yep. preserved somehow and i think those two objections have been um handled by elaine with this with this presentation Johnny and I had talked about this previously, and um, Johnny sat down with Mo Duffy to talk about this roughly, was that three weeks, a month ago, something like, who knows what time is anymore. Um, yeah, so I, I will not vote for Johnny since he is here, but I know that the majority of his concerns were addressed because he and I followed up after he talked to Mo about it. Okay, then I have no objection. We can move forward. I will. I, I already have an action item in here. I will. Uh, I'll talk with our friends in legal and and uh, get their advice on what the next step is from their perspective. All right, let's move along. We have another presentation today from another group, and that is the Operate First project represented by, oh, there you are. Hey, Karsten. Um, and we've allocated 10 minutes for, for this, so please go right ahead. OK, so quick sound check. How do I sound? Do I need to pick anything up? A little uh, bit on the quiet, water, quiet, but we can hear you, yeah. Okay. Now I can't hear you at all. So that was adjusted the wrong direction. Wait a minute, did I really mess something up there? I can hear you again now. This is really, okay, and then that's that. Yes, you're right, that was the thing. Okay, well, we're just gonna go with this and I will probably, I'll just try to speak more clearly. Um, I'm in a loud echo room, so I'm a little worried about that. But <clears throat> uh, so pardon me, um, it is, it's late here because I've now discovered what it's like to have this meeting when it's 10 o'clock in the time zone here. But let me jump over. I'm gonna go ahead and, and run this presentation today because I really wanna make sure I level set with whatever, people who've heard about Operate First often have an understanding that they think of what it, what it means. And it's usually not complete because of the messaging hasn't been so hot um, before I got there. So I'm working okay in that. So let me just go ahead and share if I've got that. Thank you. Oh, not my desktop. Um, I'm 
I'm sorry, how do I select the window? Ooh, it's not being kind to me. It only wants to go for desktop. So we're gonna just see if this will work. I'll put this on the whole desktop and we'll find out. Is this terrible? Can you see the whole thing and then I run the presentation and then it works? It's, yeah, that works. Is that working well enough? Okay, great, thanks. Looks well, I, good. I'll just, good thing I don't need speaker notes or anything like that. Um, so, I'm curious why this meeting happened 20 years in the past. Oh shoot, did I just, did I really do that? Yeah, I, I'm very confused and very interested. <laughs> um, thank you for noticing that. So boy, that's better than two periods that I caught. Yeah, interesting. Yes, well, um, ignore the rest of the date. Do uh, Buy stock, everybody, lots of stock. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so basically, even though I'm, I'm gonna go through some requests here today, I wanted to make sure not to, uh, I, I'm, I think to a degree I'm opening discussion. Um, I don't expect that there's gonna be really like, a, you know, if, hey, if it's such a great idea and you all wanna charge forward, then let's do that. But um, I wanted to make sure that the requests were out there so we knew what I was trying to drive towards. Um, and then I just wanna spend a few minutes introducing the community and the concept, um, what it, uh, what's going on there. And then um, I was gonna, I've got some slides to cover what the current community cloud looks like. Uh, which is uh, of interest from a technical perspective, um, I, but I don't, I'm not gonna be able to go into deep answers without uh, somebody um, more knowledgeable than me. And then we'll hopefully have some time for a Q&A. Um, so let's see if I can drag this out, that's pretty cool. So yeah, so basically I'm interested, hoping to, to pique your interest um, at, in understanding how, how this is a benefit to the this, this CentOS project and to the project members and the SIGs. Um, and that you'll want to put some energy and direction to, to join and collaborate with us. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about the community is up to and what the concept is all about. Um, and, and, and basically I'm looking for both a strategic and a practical evaluation saying, yeah, this is important. Yes, I see why, uh, why we wanna be involved and how are we gonna make this happen? Um, and hopefully SIGs will say, oh, that's a wonderful thing. We wanna go mess with that too. Um, I, it, some SIGs it's not gonna matter. Other ones it's gonna be more important to depending on who they are. Um, so just as we roll through, I wanted to, the, the, the key thing with these next three slides, which is a, which is a cutesy, cutesy little reminder is, um, is that initially we open source the data center by open sourcing the operating system and then the network components and then every little piece along the way that we could. And we reached a point in time where, um, where we were getting a lot more value, um, where open, where open source was getting the value out of the proprietary pieces and into the hands of, of, of people who wanted to do things with it. Um, but along the way, we got to the point where, the, where the, the, the value of the operational code itself and the people doing the operations is really where most of the economic value in the cloud is captured today. Um, and, and if you've got, um, uh, and, and, and it's not even really that it's, it, it's just that that's just how everybody happened to scale things up. Um, it was, you know, it was uh, easier and more directly to do that than it was to be trying to open source everything along the way. Um, and you know, it's the same thing true with the way that Red Hat runs its cloud. You know, there's many of those pieces that are not open source out there um, uh, in terms of the glue that makes everything happen, right? So Operate First um, began initially as a concept, um, you know, trying to scale off of the upstream first model. And, and the idea is to incorporate operational experience into software development and do that by extending the development to include uh, taking the code, operating it, testing it, proving it in a production environment. And when I say production, I mean, that kind of gray area between customers are paying you for it or you know, something like that. And your, your users of your community are depending upon it. And they really let you know when it's broken. So there's a spot in there. Um, I think you know, an, a, a classic example would be the CI system for OpenStack um, as I you know, as it was in, originally con or became conceived along the way of, of if it was running the nightly code and then it broke, um, then developers knew about it the next day because their whole build environment wasn't working, right? So you, it, it, it behooves you to, to, um, you know, to be taking care of, uh, of those environments. So, um, uh, so, so that's essentially the, you know, that's essentially the key thing is to create a feedback loop by, by so that it's not that, uh, that open source is being thrown over to a bunch of people who are taking it and then gluing it together and figuring out how to operate it and have no way to, to uh, feed back to the developers except for bug reports. Um, how do we actually create a feedback loop where those open source developers are actually here in the community production environment, uh, looking at the telemetry from their own code as it's running, looking at the results of what happens, um, hearing about it when their users have their workloads crash um, under, the, under the code from last night. Um, 
So, and in terms of like why this, you know, what's the important thing for Red Hat and why, why we care about this um, is, oh, there's my double periods. Thank you, Brian. Uh, the Red Hat, um, the way that we do things is not by, by pulling a bunch of ideas and smart people inside and coming up with a thing and then running it for multiple years. We, we use the innovation engine of, of, of open source communities to, to rapidly come up with uh, better technologies and better solutions. And this is a new kind of, um, you know, kind of open sourcing uh, site reliability engineering, right? It's like how we, uh, how we open sourcing operations so that it's really available to everybody. Um, so for so for ourselves, from from a, uh, from running managed services for customers, um, you know, part of our strength and our method is 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 going out and working in a common community space to solve these problems. Um, and so for our own teams that have been doing operations, um, they've been artificially cut off from the ability to do that largely. Uh, to, to large scale when it, when it comes to connecting into the open source community and the developers who are working on managed services um, in development before putting them in production are, are similarly not connected directly to, to that, that operational side. Depends on who they are, but it's, you know, if they're, uh, um, it, it, you know, that's not necessarily universal. Um, so the same thing with, with the rest of the open source ecosystem. So solving the problem for the ecosystem uh, solves a problem for Red Hat and lets us solve the problem for our customers. So that dynamic where a customer can can influence the direction of an open source project or an open source product so that it um, makes more sense or it works better for them. Um, and this gives us some kind of feedback loop through the open hybrid cloud experience. Um, so we, so there, in terms of some of the conception or understanding about where, where pieces are, um, we have a, we, we currently have a segment of the mass open cloud. I think I, it currently called the zero cluster. I think some you know, new things are coming online, things are changing, um, but, but there's essentially, um, you know that that was a first host environment that formerly was um, OpenShift running on OpenStack, and I think you know now it's OpenShift running on bare metal, and it's all being done um, using using GitOps, and uh, and all the code and blueprints are all up on GitHub slash GitHub.com slash operate first, right? Um, and you know we we don't have to worry about this one, but there we've had in terms of the value to products. The point is that something like um, ACM or Open Data Hub has really benefited from having a tight developer feedback loop and the developers actually um, operating the uh, service as part of the, um, um, you know, being responsible for the service in, in the open source environment, um, helping make the code do better. Um, so there's a, basically there's a, you know, the concept of this funnel and I've been working with trying to understand how, how to make this representation better is that when your energy is, when your focus is as, on software as a service has always been a, a closed spot. So the farther down a user gets with asking questions that turn them into a contributor, the kinds of questions you would ask, like, how can, you know, I, I, is there a fix? Can I contribute it? How do I get it in there? How do I run it? How do I fix it? How do I fix my fix breaks and so forth? Uh, the farther down you get towards being a contributor, the more that you're cut off. And so the, the operate first concept is how do we, you know, we store a line down the middle of this funnel so that wherever you come in, whether you come in from the service side or an open source side, you can, you can ask these same questions and be able to, to scratch the same sort of itches. Um, yeah, so let's see what, and then the rest of this, I think, I, I wanted to, you know, there, part of this is operate first is that the concept is being, is happening as part of Open Infra Labs and, and Open Infra Labs is an effort um, that's part of the Open Infra uh, Foundation to, uh, to, to essentially define things like an operate first environment and all the components that you need to, to do that sort of um, completely open cloud um, and, and either define those as specs or actually create them as reference projects. So in, in, in one hand, Operate First is a, a spec being defined as part of open, open infrastructure labs. And on the other hand, the, the Operate First community and, the, and, and our community cloud um, are a reference implementation of uh, what is an Operate First environment. So anybody can run an Operate First environment, in fact, I think the point is that many companies do internally, and what we're talking about is how do we set that up and do that collaboratively in the open. Um, so let me take a break here because I, this is this after here gets into the, the the technical bits and the other stuff that's like what this what the current cloud stuff looks like, and I'm not sure we really want to spend that much time there um, at the moment. I think it'd be better if I stop in, um, and and uh, let me see if I can jump right to, um, yeah. Community building that includes all personas. Let me see if I can jump right to, and I lost it. And did 
did I lose it or did I get locked up? My screen just froze if there's anything going on out there. Yeah, I was gonna say, it looks like you're, yeah, there you go. Yep, there you go. Yeah, so I think I'll just, I'll just go uh, wait a moment there, thanks. Um, okay, cool. I was just gonna jump down to the, to the last screen, which were the, just those questions. Um, yeah, um, what are my questions that I can answer for you? And what is it that, you know, when you're like, okay, no, what does it mean to have CentOS be uh, involved in this? And, you know, what do I envision that, that being like, and what's that about? Um, and, uh, you know, can you see this being strategic value? And, and basically, I think the short answer that I wanted to point here, and I'm just gonna kill this, stop sharing because I wanna look at your faces while I'm talking to you, thank you, is that um, we're, we're, we're actively working on bringing Red Hat uh, teams and developers over to uh, to uh, to learn how to do all to to work in our community cloud and do all of this work there. We're actively working out to recruit open source projects across the ecosystem. Um, anybody who's running a managed service and wants to go beyond CI/CD, here's a place that you can go do that. You know, please come break our stuff, right? And if you break something, that's good. We we we've learned something that we can all learn about together. We're working on um, data pol use policies so that we can open up telemetry um, data to everybody as much as possible. Um, you know, all these things are being done in conjunction with not just the mass open cloud but all of the the all of the the green community computing center in, in mass and these all the universities that are all doing that work um in conjunction with open infra foundation open infra lab there's all this kind of stuff that's going back in and it's and it's really you know moved away it's more agnostic on the tool side we're we're doing open shift because and, and kubernetes because it's what our team's ready to do and do stuff with uh we're, we're talking with a team that wants to come run um a, a kafka managed service uh, running on bare metal within our uh, com uh, operate first community cloud. So what I'm interested in is when developers are coming the, and, and to, to um, I, I mean, this basically I want to like a region in our, in our community cloud that is running CentOS stream. Um, right now we have got 500 and I mean, right now the mass open cloud has got this huge number of rel subscriptions that it can give out to people. And so getting developers to run stuff on rel subscriptions is actually the easier part of my problem today um, or problem into the future, ironically. But, but what I'd really love to see is, is people being able to take those uh, the open source developers running, you know, pick, choosing to, 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 to test against and run it against CentOS Stream so they can collect and use that data uh, back against themselves. So that's my big enough, at least initially. So what I've, questions does that raise? I, I have a handful. Um, yes, sir. I think the first question that I have um, is going to sound a little uh crass and i don't necessarily mean it that way but why what what does involvement for centos actually look like i didn't see that anywhere in the messaging and from a project perspective like i i can understand how a few of the individual sigs might want to contribute but from a centos project perspective why does this rise to the level of the board well, this is really a stream. Well, there's if I'm if I'm you know if I'm making the request at the wrong level or to the wrong person, I apologize and let me know where the right place to go is. Um, but but to me, this is it. The 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 interest is around CentOS Stream and anybody who wants to be running um, uh, ap application layer stuff, user layer stuff against that. Um, so I don't know that everybody. I don't know how everybody's consuming or using or testing against Stream. But um, but that would be and, and so 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 right now there may not be that many, but I'm thinking of the dozens or hundreds of, of uh, every time somebody's running up and every time a Red Hat developer team is starting a new service right now, they're not thinking of it as a box product, they're thinking of it as a managed service. And as as they as the engineering team focus comes towards getting everybody to uh, to do that development in an operate first method, uh, we're going to be inviting them to come in. To our cloud, and so I guess we could just grab and use CentOS Stream ourselves, um, and that's there's which is you know no no permission request required to do that. Um, but the whole point of this is not to just be taking things and consuming ourselves, but finding a chance to offer that telemetry data back. So there's a point here. Reason why it gets kind of gray is I don't know what good data there is for you all to get back out of this in terms of what's going to help the stream development or what's going to help an individual sig that might um, want that. So the way that I'm looking at this um for right now is this should be something that i think the infra sig raises um if they care to run it and they have their own hardware so maybe it's a thing maybe it's not i i don't know 
Um, if they're interested, great. I do see CentOS Stream providing some value to Red Hat in this particular instance as a, um, you know, don't break something in a RHEL 9.1 thing. Let's continue to iterate and test, which raises the question, what is Red Hat's interest in running CentOS as a part of this? Because this was primarily a Red Hat thing. And if they if they don't care about running stream on this, and so far I haven't seen like the OpenShift upstream care about rel or stream or anything else really. Um, so what I I don't see the point. Like OpenShift isn't building against CentOS; they barely build against rel. And if we're talking managed service, why I. I yeah, I, I think I'm still asking on why. Well, the, I, so so um, the, like a, like a, uh, um, uh, the other example, you know, so you, so you just nailed down a whole bunch of Kubernetes and that's great. So there's an example of one way that we're gonna be, you can do an operate first environment. Um, but in the, in the instance of uh, like the, 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 the folks who wanna run the managed, uh, managed Kafka service, they're interested in, do, in doing that to, to, um, to prove a model around an open source service. And um, you know, I actually don't know offhand what they want. I know they want to run it on bare metal. I just don't know what host OS they want to run or how they want to dynamic that. Um, and, and my thinking, simply from a community architect, community manager perspective, is I want to offer um, the teams what I think that they're going to be wanting to have. I'm not, so I could wait until I demand until I got the got the demand. You know, that's one part of it. Um, but what what I've been doing is going around and talking to everybody. Um, so. Um, you know, so and finding out what people's needs are as they as they go along. So we're, we're you know, so so there's still parts of the story that are to be put together there, I guess. Um, and if the best way to yeah. do this is to de create the demand from within the SIGs or the demand within the community to have that, and, and then do that direction, um, then that's cool. I mean, overall, I I am supportive of this goal, but to me, it feels backwards. I I think the request needs to come from elsewhere. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, there's like I I'm struggling to figure out where, at least from my perspective, where CentOS fits in this story at all, um, because um, a lot of so kind of like a lot of what what goes on here is people are taking software projects and they're wrapping them up into bundles with some scripts or magic or declarative config things or whatever and turning it into some service-like thing. Uh, and traditionally, um, CentOS hasn't really been a good home for that. I mean, we do have things like the Vert SIG and the Cloud SIG and, and things like that that have done various layered Red Hat products. But to be blunt, these are, these are essentially shadow teams representing Red Hat Enterprise Linux layered product development teams. They don't really aim to provide um, essentially the ability for you to do the same thing as the RHEL product. And so I, what my confusion is like, you've, you've also mentioned in this operate first thing is that your idea is encouraging, you know, RHEL usage, UBI usage and all these other things in there. I don't know where CentOS stream even fits into this puzzle because um, like if you're building layered operational services and such, and you're using this with RHEL UBI, like, sure, there's the, you know, as Jim mentioned, the idea of like using CentOS stream as a canary or whatnot. But I think by and large, I don't know where any of this kind of fits for, for supporting, you know, your goals, which are to try to encourage the growth and development of, of community for this kind of thing. Like, Maybe this would actually fit within the Fedora context where there's lots of stuff that require fresher stacks, more diverse package sets. And there's actually like more of a culture of people building services in that community. And so like there's maybe some opportunity to mesh there for like Fedora community members that build and develop services that run in Fedora that they can actually turn around and work with Red Hat people to like support them in this manner in a way that is maintainable and supportable long-term, blah, 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 blah. But I don't I see like that happening at all in CentOS. Somebody that's doing lifting and shift, lift and shift with, 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 with jamming, you know, a bare, bare bones CentOS in the container with, with their application and calling it a day, or 
Um, so, like, a bigger part of the, uh, like, I'm, I, I'm mindful that we're almost out of time, but uh, so I'll try to make this quick. But the, the, the biggest issue is that, you know, in CentOS, nobody runs services, like, at all. Um, nobody builds any applications that they're going to run because there's no privilege to access infrastructure. There's no, like, there, there is essentially no sharing of resources within the CentOS project for the community. So I don't know what we would do in CentOS with this. Now, that's not to say that we couldn't change this and we could adjust things to make it so that that is something that we could do. But as it stands right now, I don't see an, uh, an opening for it. Um, for, you know, I also think of the, you know, our, our friends in Fedora, the Fedora case is there's a lot of people that actually run, you know, they write and develop services in the community and they run them in Fedora infrastructure. It's a little bit more open, but like, the actual operational aspects of these services are still too unknown. And this is something that would actually make that stuff more known, more maintainable, more shareable and stuff. But like, I, I just don't know uh, where, where this fits for CentOS. Um, but I can see that there is potentially an opportunity. I just don't know what it would be yet. Well, like I said, the first part of this for me was making sure I you know, was being informative. So that it, it, if it turns out to not really have a fit or there's nothing here, or there's in my case, you know, generate some demand and that kind of thing, then when you hear about it next, it's not going to, you're not going to be coming from a zero um, understanding and you can contact me if you've got any questions about it. So, yeah, so yeah thanks for hearing me out. I appreciate um, making this possible. Yeah, I, I have one hopefully quick question that sounds hard is how? There's, there, there's like wonderful philosophy that I think is baked into this that is going to help build out more maintainable, more sustainable applications. But how do I apply? Like, okay, so I, like, from a nuts and bolts, what do I type perspective? How do I do it? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. from, yeah, and from the board level, I get very, very nervous when I'm signing someone else up to do work. Um, because, I mean, I'm not likely to be the how person doing the typing, and I don't like to tell people to do things. Uh, there was a, like, in the vein of working towards a service in a canary type thing, there was an amazing presentation given at the last CentOS Dojo about the CI CD pipelines for Stream that I think has the potential to really align with a lot of what's going on there, if I'm understanding these things correctly, which I could not be. But I would be strongly tempted to reach out to the authors of that presentation and start to flesh out what a how would look like. As, as Jim mentioned, if it comes from us, it's probably not right because someone's going to have to do it that's not us. And I don't want to sign someone up for something and then it not get done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, if, uh, if you could, uh, um, who are the authors of that? Who, who are you talking about for that, that proposal? And um, the... I'll, I'll put you in touch with those folks, yeah. Karsten. Okay, because yeah, the the, I guess the other part that was that was um, probably stuck in my head as well was the, I, I know the dynamic of when the InfraSig was, was created, there was a little bit of um, the CPE was involved in saying, uh, you know, what parts do you want us to be owners of and what parts, you know, so there's, there was, there is some, um, um, what's the word, kind of handoff of authority going on within there, right? So it's not exactly like directing, like, hey, go and do this thing, which wasn't what I was thinking of. It was more like, like, here, here's, a, like, right now they're taking care of areas of interest on behalf of the board, on behalf of the project. This might be, if this was another area of interest, you know, it, it's, it would be useful. It's like a two-way thing, you know, so generating interest in both directions, right? So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, I'll, I'll, and I'll look into those documents later. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Karsten. Um, it sounds like there is more discussion to be had on this. Um, and we just have a few minutes left. I have a single announcement that hopefully you're all aware of. And that is that the Centus Dojo is on the 7th and 8th of October. And the directors who are present are invited to participate in the opening session at 1500 UTC, which is a ask me anything, open question and answer sort of session where we throw you all under the bus. Um, 
Are there any other announcements or other business that we want to address in the last five minutes? Hearing none, um, move to adjourn. Thank you all so much for your time. And uh, between Thomas and I, we'll try to get minutes out in the next few days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Folks. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take Thank care. You Thank you. You have to manually stop the recording. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks a lot.